Okay, so for the people that are interested in following your lifestyle recommendations, the, the patients that you work with that you said, you know, you do the lifestyle work, can you give us a summary? What, what type of foods are you talking about having them eat? What does it actually look like? Just give us a summary and let's pretend it's a, a type two diabetic patient that comes to you. How would you, how would you work with them? Yeah, you know, first of all, there's such a <laughs> people people get this idea that plant based diet. We always laugh as vegans, right? Online on the Instagram, we always post the pictures of our foods and say, "Oh yeah, it's so tough being a vegan." Because people have this idea that what, they're like, "Well, what do you eat?" Like, as if there's nothing to eat. Meanwhile, we eat a whole huge variety. Like I told you, my patients, there's no variety. It's eggs and bacon every single morning. Maybe they wrap it in a tortilla. It's a sandwich for lunch and it's a steak for dinner. It's everybody's diet, but our diets are so varied. So there's so many things. It doesn't have to be just what I like to eat. It could be what you like. I mean, you and I, Robbie, eat a different diet. Yours is very high in fruit. I love fruit, but I really like grains and starches and things like that too. So um, th there's all kinds of things to choose from. What I basically tell people is I want them to eat produce. I want them to eat things that come from the ground. I want, you know, everyone's like, how do you read a, um, a ingredients label. And I'm like, well, first of all, if it's got a label on it, we're already starting with a situation where there may be a problem. Okay, I don't want labels. I want my food from a garden. Uh, but you, there will be labels involved. But you just want the, you know, you want to read the label and know every single ingredient. You don't want anything to be foreign. And I go through it with my patients. You know, is there sugar in the first three ingredients? Is it processed food? Uh, how processed has it been? Um, you know, I've got meal plans. I've got a meal plan that's on lighter, um, lighterculture.com. Um, I love 21 day kickstart because they use that diet with diabetics. So they took a group of people and they had them do the ADA diet. And then they had a group of people do the, um, vegan diet and they followed them 72 weeks. It was a long-term study. And what was fascinating to me is the vegan diet that they chose diabetic doctors would die. And they tell people to eat, you know, Pasta. I mean, for a diabetic doctor to tell someone to eat pasta is that's like sacrilege. They were eating bananas. You don't tell a diabetic to eat a banana. That's malpractice. And yet these people did better than the people that were doing the ADA diet as far as dropping their blood sugar. So I like the 21 day diet. I think it's uh, I think it's been ready really well rehearsed. I try to tell people every day I want them to get some grains. I want them to get some beans. I want dark green leaves. I want a whole fruit and I want berries every single day, a handful of nuts, and that pretty much gets you everything you need. Um, I don't do much supplements. I tell people to take B12 once a week. Uh, I am playing, uh, there are some data, like I'm going back and forth in vitamin D, but if someone's vitamin D deficient, I do have them supplement. That's pretty much it. Um, What's funny is your, so your description of the doctor, what do I have to meet? It's funny how it's so simple. It's so simple, yet at the same time, it's so difficult. As you were talking earlier, it's easier for somebody to just go and eat the low-carb diet. It's easy for you to tell them to do that. But the, it's, it's really a funny situation there, but it's the truth. Yeah, it's crazy. And they, people just they can't get a concept of sitting down, you know, like a, a salad is like this, you know, iceberg lettuce with a few carrots on. You know how you get a side salad that's so, like, you know, boring. And, and that's what their concept is of this. They're like, you tell me I have to get a salad for lunch? What's that going to look like? But you know what your salads look like on my salads. I mean, I go to a salad bar and it looks like a pyramid of beauty and color and all kinds of stuff. They don't get this concept to begin with. They've never grown up like that. They, they've, the salad has always been a side, eat a few bites of it, don't enjoy it, and then go for the main meal. So it's, it's a huge change for people. But when they make that change, invariably they feel it's, it's amazing. I love watching people switch, you know, diets because it, it's like everyone says the same thing. It's like, I didn't know that I felt bad before, but now I realize that I did feel bad and how great I feel now. It's, it's really interesting. When I was reading Proteinaholic, um, one of the things that I recognized was that I was a Proteinaholic for a good portion of my life. I grew up as an athlete. I still am an athlete and I kind of had that, you know, eat more protein mentality. One of the things that I remember holding me back from eating more plant foods at any point in my childhood or adolescence was this concept that if I were to eat a uh, like vegetarian-based meal, that I would not be full. Right. So as a result of that, I just didn't do it. And then right. by not doing it, I never reaped the benefits of it. And then I just kind of fell back into that same cycle again. Right. And which, which brings up another myth of, about protein is that protein makes you full. 
and it, it, there was a really, there's a great researcher named Barbara Rolls, and she did this work, uh, wrote a book called Volumetrics, uh, and she did these great studies where she would take people and she would give them these casseroles, okay? And one ca the casseroles all looked the same, but one casserole had more water in it, one casserole had more fiber in it, one casserole had more protein in it. So did the higher protein casserole make you full? No, it was the volume of food you ate. And so if she could take the same calories and increase the volume by increasing fiber, or increasing water, that's what made you full. So think about the kind of foods we eat. They're high in fiber, they're high in water. So you can eat a ton of them. I, the beauty is a lot of my patients that come to see me have done a million calorie counting diets, right? They've all done Weight Watchers and those kind of things. I tell them, I don't care how much you eat of fruits and vegetables and beans. You can eat as much as you want. You want a salad that big, do it. I, I challenged my one patient to eat as many apples as she could in a day because she thought apples made her fat. And I was like, I don't care. You eat as many apples as you want. Well, she came back, she said, I eat like five apples a day, which to me is a lot. That's a lot of apples. I know you guys eat a ton of fruit, but that would fill me up. Uh, but she lost weight because those foods are not calorie dense. Those foods are high in water, they're high in fiber. So most of the stuff that you eat it's not actually calories that you're absorbing. And that's actually what creates satiety. So the beauty of a plant-based diet is you could eat a lot. The mistake people make in doing a plant-based diet is trying to restrict portion size at the same time. And in weight loss surgery, something similar happens to what you were talking about before. A lot of people say, well, I eat the meat first because I wanna make sure that I fill up on protein first and then I can have the other stuff. And so that's become such a big concept in weight loss surgery patients because they have a small stomach, they can't eat as much, so they're like, well, I'm going to eat the protein first. Um, but it turns out that it, they eat the protein first, and then they don't get all these beautiful fruits and vegetables that are high in nutrients and phytonutrients and things like that. And they don't feel well. Now, if you look at my bariatric patients versus someone else's bariatric patients, you'll see a noticeable difference in the way they look. This is obviously subjective and not objective, but they, they feel good. They look good. Their vitamin levels are fantastic.